the Seven Trumpets Prepper. And guys, in this video today, I want to share with you something that um, it has just been like absolutely radiating to me here lately, especially when I've interacted with family, friends, acquaintances, um, people out in YouTube land, uh, friends on Facebook, I mean, you name it. One thing I have noticed is that there is a deep, sincere, heartfelt resentment from people toward the Most High, toward being obedient to His Word. And um, the context of this video I'm going to talk about today is I honestly believe, and we were talking about this at Passover get-together when we had everybody get together at Passover, which was amazing, um, is that I think many people were literally made for destruction from the very beginning. Now, I don't want to. I don't want this to come across the wrong way. I'm going to get in a lot of scripture in a minute, um, and that way you can look at this yourself. But I don't want to say predestination because um, everybody has a free choice. But what I mean is, I, 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 we were talking about it that the Most High. I fully believe that you know He knew the end from the very beginning. I mean, I know Scripture teaches this, but I think you know it's one of those deals where it's like this tiny house. I know how I want my tiny house to finish. So I start from the very beginning, and I know that this wood plank's going to be cut off, and I know that's going to be scrapped, and out there it lays in the pile ready for the burning and destruction. And, you know, I just think some people here, for the sake of the end result, I, I, I hate it to come across that way. I don't know any other way to put it. Because I'll give you a prime example of this. One of the people that I used to be friends with, and I unfriended her last night, literally, and, and it's one of the things that kind of, pushed me to finally make this video because it's been on my mind for a while is that if you looked at her post and I'm going to change her name to um, Christina we're just going to say it was Christina to for the sake of respect to her but so Christina posts this and I know she done it for attention it said person you know how it's like going back in line uh, back and forth dialogue and then we'll go straight to scripture after this just a couple more things and she goes person asked, do you believe in, and she said G-O-D, but we'll just say the most high. Do you believe in the most high? And she's like, no. And do you fear going to hell and dying and burning, blah, blah, blah. And she says, no. And this just goes back and forth. I wrote on there, I said, I know that you're a person that values the sanctity of life um, because you're anti-vacciner, you're, you know, a lot of this, the chemtrail thing, all this stuff that, you know, people's like, oh, it's just conspiracy. I mean, you're very well awake to that. Um, even the flat earth that, you know, awake to that. And I'm just like, how can you not believe in a divine creator when you see so much evil in this world? It's obvious that there's something at war with the creator. <laughs> and she's like, I don't believe in anything. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that is where, because and, and I said, uh, you know, uh, how can you be atheist? And she says, I'm not atheist. I don't believe anything. We are, we are crossing a line in the last generation where the people are so deluded in their mind that for them to come across somebody such as myself that's a person of faith that believes every word of the scripture, you know, completely committed to the most. I mean, y'all better be glad I don't run this world. Because I'm telling you, there'd be a flag flying high with the Most High's name on it, high flying in Jerusalem. And the people of the Most High Yah be gathered from all four corners of the earth, the true seed of Abraham. I put them people back in their land. And I tell people to treat them with respect because that's the Most High Yah's treasure. And all sovereigns of the earth and all their people would come to the appointed feast and they'd bow down their feet before the Most High. And those that didn't submit, it'd be a bad day. It didn't keep the Torah. So be glad Luke don't run the show. All right. So anyway, um, strange or Gentile wouldn't end well. But anyway, the... You know, at the end of the day, I, I keep running across these people, and they have no faith whatsoever. They don't believe, but yet they preach this religion of Scientology. They pre preach this religion of self-consciousness. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, I just am mind-blown, and I think that the mind has become so divoid in some people that they're unsightful. Uh, I, I mean, I, I'm, I really want to be careful how I say this, because I'm not trying to add to Scripture take away. And look, before I uh, share any more of my thoughts, just... I want to read these scriptures with you. You haven't got a Hallelujah Scripture Bible. Great Bible to have. Um, anyway, we'll start off and just bear with me because um, there's a lot of verses to go through here. I think there's 13 of them, so just stick with me, okay? And Matthew chapter 13, 11 says, And he answered and said to them, Because it has been given to you to know the secrets of the reign of the Shemayim, of the heaven. But to them it has not been given. 
and I'm just going to commentate as we go through this. I honestly believe, like, like right there, it's just not been given to some people to understand and know the truth. Um, I don't know why these things are. You know, it's like Pharaoh's heart got hardened. Um, and the children of Israel, you know, that I mean, it, it plainly says that the Most High hardened Pharaoh's heart. I talked about that the other day with someone we were having a discussion. I'm like, I believe that Pharaoh was going to be one of those people never accept the Most High anyway, so he was already a vessel committed to destruction, and therefore the Most High just took and used that and took him and ran with it. I mean, now that's my personal opinion. I'm not trying to add to Scripture or take away. I'm just saying, because, I, look, ladies and gentlemen, I'm a person, and I'll be first and foremost to tell you, I'm unworthy, I feel unworthy of the kingdom no matter how righteous I live from this day forward or what. I'm telling you, that's just where Luke's at. And Father, please forgive me for some out in the Bible there. But, I, I mean, you know, it's just it's just where I'm at with it. All right? So I don't feel bad pointing these things out to people when I'm like, my goodness, I believe in the Most High. I don't even count myself worthy, and I'm so grateful for His mercy. And then I look at these people and their bold defiance in the face of the Most High. I'm like, I'm telling people, I think they'd kill Satan himself if they could. Some people are so wicked, I think even the devil might be scared of them. Just saying. All right, so moving on, we're going to go to Revelation 20 and 15. All right, and it says, And if anyone was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. All right, if your name ain't in the book, you ain't making it in. All right, and I know this some of this stuff that we've all heard um, you know, from pastors and et cetera, all throughout our life. But you, you just put all this in the context here in a minute. And the, all those dwelling on the earth whose names have not been written in the book of the life of the slain lamb from the foundation of the world shall worship him. All right, now that's really, you got to really think about that. From the foundation of the world, people, some people were never going to be in that book. Some scary, heavy stuff when you start to think about it. I'm telling you, like, when you look at people nowadays, I look at people, and I try not to judge, but I'm just like, wow. That person, if they inherit the kingdom of heaven, it will be a shocker to me. I mean, mind blown. All right, moving forward, all right? We're going to go to Matthew 12 and 50. And I hope when we get to the end of all these scriptural verses, it'll, it'll be clear to you what I'm trying to say. Matthew 12 and 50, all right? I marked all these before we got started so I didn't have to thumb through and try to find it all. All right. For whoever does the desire of my Father who is in the heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Let me tell you, it, I have found so many people here lately that I'm just like, you know, my family, I don't know how many times I've said it, my family's dead to me. You know, I mean, they're dead to me. They're alive, a lot of them, but they're just dead to me. And, you know, I have friends and acquaintances and people like that that love the Most High and keep His commands and desire to serve him that are more blood to me than those than, than than my own family. And I'm finding that the world is starting to go down a path very quickly at a rapid pace. That is there is those who are a hundred percent aligning themselves with the most high that they come into another piece of truth and they're like, Oh, true Hebrew, bam, I got it. Flatter, bam, I got it. Um, you know, Sabbath, I got it. I mean, it don't matter. Whatever it is, just boom, 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 boom. Anything that comes to them is like, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. It's not we're simple minded. It's that we look at it, but now if it's true, I'll walk in it, no question asked. And that's that simple. And then there's those people that'll find any bit of truth or have a truth presented to them. They will fight that with all their heart. I've seen so many rebuttals to so many things that um, since I've came into the truth to it, and I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm like, this is the most ridiculous rebuttals ever. There's, there's nothing factual in this at all that you're trying to rebuttal against the truth. I'm just like, man. And so I'm telling you, there, there's a coming a time uh, separation right now that you like I've said in the video past that your own family and friends uh, uh, deliver you up persecution check that tab right there I'm telling you that day is swiftly approaching all right so moving on mark chapter 16 verse 16 all right give me just a second and it says he who has believed and has been immersed shall be saved but he who has not believed shall be condemned people don't believe is condemned already I mean like uh, you know, a friend of mine the other night that said that to me, I just went ahead and unfriended her. It's not because that I can't, you know, go on about my life because somebody's views are different. Mine. It ain't that. And people are toxic. You don't need that in your life. I don't care if it's family, friend, your wife, kid, your own blood, whoever it is. You don't think people like it in your life, people. It's toxic. It is deadly toxic to you. 
And I'm telling you, the best thing you can do is remove that mess ASAP. All right? So, moving on. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. All right? It says, Not everyone who says to me, Master, Master, shall enter into the reign of the heaven, but he who is doing the desire of my Father in heaven. The living word is just that. This is a living word to me. All right? The more I find in it, the more I need to walk in it. I want to be in perfect, complete scriptural obedience to the most high when it returns. Look, whether I'm free or bond in a new kingdom, whether I'm rich or poor, I just won't be there. It's that simple. You know, I just won't be there. This world has nothing for me. I mean, miserable day in, day out. Okay, I feel like this little tiny house is my only little skate pod. I can go and sit in and just feel like, <sighs> and take a breath for a minute. No joke. I'm telling you, it's crazy. And I'm not, I'm not depressed. I'm telling you, it's just like, you have got to get away from Babylon. You've got to flee Babylon by any means necessary because, like, the more I see these people, the more they talk, the more they speak, the more they act. I can't take it. I can't take it because people just done gone lost their mind. I mean, truth is devoid of these people. All right? Moving on. We've got, um, let's see. I don't think I read that. I'm sorry. I, I missed one here that I want to go back to real quick. It's Revelation 21. Um... Verse 8. Sorry, I should have had that one marked. Yeah, this one is powerful, okay? And people want to, uh, actually, I think some new scriptural, Bi or new scripture Bibles, have they've started uh, removing some of this stuff, which is scary. Um, but it says, uh, Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, but as for the cowardly, Oh, and then cowardly, I would also put that with those that are not willing to stand up for the truth after they found it out. Okay, I would roll some of those people in there. Um, and untrustworthy and abominable. That's all those folks loving sodomy and eating your pork and, um, you know, five minutes later going to church and feeling good inside about it. I, I mean, I'm just laying this out there. And murderers, um, like that dude that murdered that poor man on Facebook Live the other day. And those who whore. So if you love your pornography and you go sleep around with your neighbor's wife. And drug sorcerers, that's all you people can't quit putting a pill bottle down, popping that mess. Um, you know, and trying something natural. And idolaters and the false. Uh, their part is in the lake which burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Now I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you in a minute, just for safekeeping though, that the fire will burn up. They'll turn to ash. They'll never be again. That is the second death. They ain't none of this everlasting burning stuff. All right, so that... Pastor man keeps his offering plate full, all right? I'll get to that here shortly, all right? So next up, we're going to go to Psalms 14, all right? Um, and I love I love David's writings, and this one right here applies to my friend from the other night. It says to the chief singer of David, The fool has said in his heart, there is no Yahuwah, all right? Now, some scriptures will say, um, or some translations will say, there is no El, you know, that only a fool saying in his heart, there is no El him. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, there is a living divine creator, and he has many enemies, okay? The Lucifer, um, his fa the fallen angels, um, mankind. There are uh, people as demon-possessed by um, these fallen enemies. I mean, I'm telling you, like, there's just so many, or I'm sorry, the spirits of the uh, demonic possession. There's so many of these things I can get into that, the most high has many enemies and if you can't see these out here then there's something bad wrong with you because i'm telling you there is a lot of bad 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 things out here and bad people and if you can't see that then i don't understand how in the world you could ever see the most high um because there is a living creator because there's plenty of things that war against him all right moving on and we're we're blazing right through this um jeremiah 31 and 30 Okay. If I don't offend somebody by the end of this video, they have done something wrong. Just, this is hard truth. But each one shall die for his own wickedness. Whoever eats sour grapes, his teeth shall be blinded. Um, you know, uh, here's the thing, and, and I'm about to go to Deuteronomy and Ezekiel with this, but this right here also applies to, th there, there's a little segment out there that's trying to carve off people as if the world isn't unbelieving enough. There's that little segment, I call them the hateful Hebrews. Um, and there's the street preacher crowd and um, uh, the folks that love to wear the purple robes on their, uh, and, and just bash, um, especially the white man. And ain't no salvation, that saying ain't no salvation. Every man 
that does sin. He'll die for his own sins. I can't help that my ancestor, uh, or well, I know, it's the best of my knowledge, ain't nobody ever had slaves. My ancestor, but you know, I can't help that the true Hebrew Israelites were slaves to this person, or that person. Um, they they were took into slavery for their own sin, all right, for the sins of their, uh, you know, for taking a covenant in Deuteronomy, or, or for taking a covenant on Mount Sinai, the Ten Commandments, and now keeping them. Okay, it's not my problem. All right, so now you, that you, you know, yeah, because of the sins of your ancestors, all right, and that covenant that was made, that that was part of it, that it would be on the your descendants for generations to come. I'm sorry, it, you know, it just don't apply to me. But what does apply, ladies and gentlemen, is each and every one of us will die for our own sin. All right, if we continue in it. All right, so Deuteronomy 24 and 16. All right, here's what it says. Fathers are not put to death for their children, and children are not put to death for their fathers. Each is to die for his own sin. All right? And, and, you know, this further goes into some of the Hebrews right here. Do not twist the right ruling of a stranger or the fatherless, nor take uh, the garment of a widow. All right, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, all of us are going to answer for our own deeds. All right? So, you know, if you're one of these persons, atheist, or you don't want to believe, or etc., cetera, um, you know, just the fact that you just heard this today, you're accountable. All right, you've been you've been made notified. All right. So lastly, on that section, we've got 18 and 20. Says, the being who sins shall die. The son shall not bear the wickedness of the father, nor the father bear the wickedness of the son. The righteousness of the righteous is up on himself, and the wickedness of the wicked is up on himself. But now here you go for the unbelieving. But if the wicked, if he turns from all his sins which he has done. And he shall guard all my laws, not part, all, and shall do right ruling and righteousness. He shall certainly live. He shall not die. All the transgressions which he has done shall not be remembered against him. In his righteousness that he has done, he shall live. Have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked? Now here goes shows the loving creator. Declares the master Yahweh, is it not that he should turn from his ways and live? But when a righteous one turns away from his righteousness and does unrighteousness according to all the abominations that the wicked one has done, shall he live? I don't expect to live if I do that way. All his righteousness which is done shall not be remembered. You can just line that out in the book. For his trespass which he has committed and his sins which he has committed for them, he shall die. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Our creator, he, he, he's very straightforward with us, the requirements, all right? I mean, it's it's not here today and there tomorrow, you know? I mean, it's been cut and dried from the beginning, right? Moving on. Daniel 12 and 3, all right? So what's going to happen one day when all these people that are unbelieving um, and that are abominators and blasphemers and reject the truth, reject all the truths in Scripture, reject the Master, um, you know, what's, what's going to be the final game plan come down to that? And it says, in Daniel 12, I'll just read down through it. It says right here, Now at that time, Michal shall stand up, the great head who is standing over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of distress such as never was since there was a nation until that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. There's that book again. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth wake up. Now, I, mean, wait, I, I thought souls like went to heaven and some went to everlasting burning hell constant the moment they dropped dead. But wait, it says here, they're asleep in the dust of the earth. And that's what Messiah said about Lazarus. And I can go on and on and on and on. Some to everlasting life. So apparently they didn't have everlasting life already either because they were laying in corruption. And some to reproaches, everlasting abhorrence. And those who have insight shall shine like the brightness of the expanse and those of the expanse. You mean the firmament or, 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 or with, with all the, the stars in it? But wait, I thought we lived in a spinning uh, globe going through the uh, uh, thousand mile an hour around going, flying through space. Anyway, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Boy, I'd love to shine like a star. Let that be me, Master God, please. And moving on, all right, we got the last one here is Malachi 4 and 3. So what happens to these wicked folks? All right, these ones that blasphemed and atheist and all this, but know that Yahweh has separated a kind for one, a kind one for himself. Sorry, wait a minute. Give me just a second, guys. I apologize. I flipped over here too far. I was in uh, Psalms four and three, uh, Malachi four and three. We'll just read from four, starting down because it's only six verses. 
For look, the day shall come, burning like a furnace. And all the proud, all you blaspheming bunch, all you mouth chiding bunch that I see all the time, make me sick, all right? And every wicked one shall be stubble. And the day that shall come shall burn them up. Bye-bye. And Yahweh, uh, and uh, burn them up, said Yahweh of hosts, which leaves them to neither root nor branch. You gone. See ya. But to you who revere my name, I revere you, Master Yah. And I, I know many of you out there watch this channel revere him. The brilliance of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. Praise the Most High Yah. And you shall go out and leap for joy like calves from the stall. I see my cows. At times, the calves jump. Boy, they are happy. I'm all in, man. That, 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 that's some serious power when you see a cow jumping high in air. And you shall trample the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. On the day that I do this, said Yahweh of hosts, remember the Torah of Moshe, my servant, which I commanded him in Horeb for all Israel. Laws and right rulings. If I didn't, uh, I'm sorry if I got that wrong on the mount earlier when I said about Ten Commandments. Forgive me, guys. It just hit me. Uh, anyway, see, I am sending you Eliah, the, Nab, Nab, the prophet, before the coming of the great and awesome day of Yahuwah. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children of their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with other destruction. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, and lastly, all that I took was from Hallelujah Scriptures. Lastly, ladies and gentlemen, I just say this to you. Um, I encourage you with the utmost heart that if you're not a person of faith, if you're not a believer, to seriously evaluate not only your life, but this world that you see. Because I am telling you, things are going to happen very soon. If you haven't studied the seven trumpets of Revelation, I would, this would be my appeal to you that when the seven trumpets begin to sound, if you, if you want to look for those, that's in the book of Revelation, okay? When you start to see these things take place, there'll be no denying that this is outside man's control, okay? Um, you, just, you just cannot make this stuff happen naturally, okay? So when you see... A third of the ships destroyed in a day. When you see the literal stars, a third of them fall from the heaven, the firmament dome above, start burning the earth. When you see all these things that's described in that start to take place, I would hope that you would be actuated to to start to investigate very swiftly at that point because time's drawing nigh, and see that everything I've told you here on this channel, especially pertaining to the scripture toward the end days that there was some value in that. And I hope that it turns your heart back to the Most High, y'all. So guys, I hope this video has been a help to you. I hope it gives those that are constantly downtrodden by toxic people, um, because I see it myself all the time, a, um, a reinvigorated fire to keep going forward because these people are going to be irrelevant one day. They're going to be ash. They're going to be never existent again. And they're just going to be like a little tiny um, mosquito that just has to be swatted and flicked off. And then you don't ever have to look at them people again. All right? They're irrelevant. Um, and that's how I try to treat people anymore is I try to treat them with love and kindness. And once that I see that there's no turning back and they just going to blaspheme and they're going to disrespect and um, be irreverent to the most high, those people are dead to me. They're cut off. They're toxic. They're, and, and, and they're just a, a faint memory in my mind at that point. I don't need them. And I encourage you to treat that in the same manner. Your life will be a lot more positive. You'll have a lot better days ahead if you do. And when the time comes that you do have to cut these people off for good, um, it won't hurt at all. You'll feel nothing. Believe me. So guys, until we see you again here, Seven Times Forever Channel, uh, look for some build videos coming up soon, um, some tiny house stuff, and I've got some off-grid stuff as well that I want to share with you here in the next couple weeks ahead. So until we see you again, I hope you have a most precious, blessed day in Yahushua and I.